Hello there. Welcome to this week's episode of Health Options, the program that not only tracks government policies on health, but gives you the information you need to make informed choices about your health. Thanks for joining us on the program. I am Rabi Abdullah. Nigeria has one of the largest stocks of human resources for health in Africa, but like the other 57 human resource for health crisis countries, has densities of nurses, midwives and doctors that are still too low to effectively deliver essential health services. In recent years, migration of health workers to foreign countries is said to have declined, and the primary challenge for Nigeria is inadequate reproduction and inequitable distribution of health workers. The health workforce is concentrated in urban tertiary healthcare delivery services. As an important element of national security, public health not only functions to provide adequate and timely medical care, but track, monitor, and control disease outbreak. The Nigerian healthcare has suffered infectious disease outbreaks year in, year out, which underscores the need for a robust public health system that works for all. On this episode of Health Options, my guest is the president of the Nigerian Medical Association, Professor Innocent Uja, as we review the state of the Nigerian healthcare system. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Health Options. Let's now get talking with the president of the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, Professor Innocent Uja, as we review the state of the Nigerian healthcare system. Thanks for joining us on the program, Prof. Thank you very much and you're welcome. We're evaluating the, Niger the state of the Nigerian healthcare system, and uh, as we all know, the Nigerian healthcare system is one that has evolved over time. You know, facing uh, numerous challenges, it's had you know, it's uh, low and high moments. Right now, we are in a global pandemic. We're talking about um, shortage of human resource for health, which has been one of the problems that the nation's healthcare system has to grapple with. And I know coming from the NMA, you have your you know, share of the number of doctors that you know, ideally should serve the Nigerian population. Can we begin from there? Do we have enough doctors serving the healthcare needs of the Nigerian populace? Well, thank you very much. Um I am quite delighted that um, NT is sufficiently concerned about the health system in Nigeria. Um, first of all, you can never have enough doctors in any part of the world, be it America or Europe. Certainly, we do not have enough in Nigeria. Uh, the beauty of the healthcare system in Nigeria is the training of manpower, doctors in this country no doubt has increased. Uh, the number has increased. Uh, we used to train, uh, we used to have four or five medical schools that used to train doctors. Uh, today we have over 30. As you know, the training of doctors is very rigorous, it's very demanding, and therefore facilities are necessary. And therefore, even though we have about 30 institutions training doctors, they are regulated by number. Um, some hospitals, some universities train maybe only 50. The maximum that any university can train in this country as a college is 200, and that is the University College of Baden. Every other uh, uh, colleges will, um, will have probably uh, 75, 100. But by and large, I believe that uh, it is clearly better than it was in terms of training. However, how many of these do we have in Nigeria? Um, the training of Nigerian doctors by any standard is excellent. And uh, I say that very quickly because despite the fact that um, we're doing the best to train, many of them are immigrating. Therefore, the issue of migration, the issue of brain drain, is clearly, clearly obvious in Nigeria. 
We've uh, had some other information that points to the fact that that syndrome has actually <coughs> declined. The, what, which syndrome? I mean, the, the brain drain no, syndrome. No, it's more Doctors, than never before. Oh, really? All you need to do is go to the American Embassy and go to the uh, UK Embassy. It is then that you know, and of course Saudi Arabia, you know how many Nigerian doctors are immigrating. And they are doing so not because they want to go, you know, in the sense of patriotism. The Nigerian doctors want to serve in Nigeria, but the naval environment is not conducive. The, um, the equipment for medical care, as you know, we've gone technological. Many of the uh, things we do, we have to have technological basis. But we don't have that, the ensure supply. Um, if you want to do radiography, you want to do radiology, you want to do pathology, uh, everything has gone technological and digital. Um, the work environment is very hostile. You recall that at the moment, um, either one, or one professional is going on strike or the other, which in my opinion is totally avoided, avoidable. Um, currently, we are talking about hazard allowance for doctors and other health workers. We're talking about extending um, retirement age from 60 to 65 or 70 for health workers and for consultants, you know, as uh, doc uh, consultant doctors in this country. We also are saying that we need to improve the quality of care of our people. Um, in doing so, it requires a lot. It, 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 uh, medical education and even medical treatment is highly capital intensive and we believe that yes government is doing its best but that is not good enough the best is not good enough because we also think that government cannot do everything we expect the private sector to come in to help Nigeria to, to support the government of, governments of Nigeria as you know we have three tests of health system in this country the, the tertiary health system, which is run largely by the federal government. Some of the state governments have now teaching hospitals, medical schools, and then uh, they run primarily secondary, secondary health sector, I mean system. And then um, the local government is, is in charge of the primary health care system. And therefore, the issue of universal health, universal health coverage comes here very quickly. If you want to achieve universal health coverage, like which we call Agenda 2030, then we must revive our primary health care system. We came across an information that says that there's been a decline in the number of um, uh, exodus of doctors outside the country for greener pastures, which you counted. Yeah, report, rightly, yeah, justifiably. Yes, too. yeah. The report also says that the problem lies in the inequitable distribution That's correct. of doctors, such yes. that you have more doctors concentrated in the urban areas yes. at the detriment of the rural areas. So you just talked about primary health care yes. and you highlighted the deficit yes. in terms of manpower, particularly doctors now. Yes. So where, what is the, where, where is the disconnect? Let me tell you, one of the, one of the things that is happening with the governments of Nigeria and the federal government of Nigeria should quickly address is the issue of secondary health care and the primary health care system. The state governments are unwilling to uh, employ doctors and other health workers. Again, because every, country, every state now has a federal establishment institution. It's either a teaching hospital or a federal medical center. Those institutions pay more the even while we are talking about the fact that the environment is not conducive, many people that is within the Nigerian country, Nigerian state, doctors move from state government employment to federal government employment, even within the country. Now the issue of local government is that no local government wants uh, go government wants to employ a doctor or a nurse. They in, in, they employ choose. That's community health ex community extension workers who are not adequately trained and don't have the capacity and competencies. And, the, the, and we have more of the disease burden in the, Correct, the primary right. health care. Yeah, because the environment, the local government, I don't know whether you have visited many of the local governments. The only time they come to work is 30th 
and, to, and, and 31st or 28th. They just come to collect salary and go away. There is nothing happening in the local government. I have evidence to show because I worked, had worked in UNICEF. And while we were working in UNICEF, we were dealing with local governments. And if you want to see any staff anywhere at any time, is when they are paying salaries. And nobody is talking about it. And we think that that is the best thing to do. And even then, where doctors are willing to go and work, where the environment is not even conducive for their children to go to school, right? For there's no water, there are no good schools. And I, I don't think anybody, any doctor, would be justified for his child or her child to be out of school child. I don't think so. And therefore, these are situations where you find that doctors and other health workers are very reluctant to go to the community, despite the fact that the local governments are unwilling to employ them. Now, these are the contradictions in this country, and we need to address them. We must have a stakeholders meeting to discuss this. The federal government alone cannot and will not be able to take care of all the staff that are needed. Uh, they only will take care of the local government, I mean the tertiary institutions. Even then, many of the facilities, primary health care facilities, have been built by federal government. Why should that be so? That means the states, some of the states are shaking their res 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 responsibilities. The local government, like I said, is non-existent, and I can be controverted. Somebody should tell me that they exist. If they exist, they only exist when it is time for salary, to come and collect salary. And that is not good enough. If we want to improve our health care system, as you know, we are one of the worst health indices. In this country, maternal mortality ratio is very, very high still, unacceptably. As a gynecologist, I worked on maternal mortality for 17 years when I was in the University of Jos. And I brought out all the factors that were responsible for high maternal mortality ratio in this country. Is it that there is no water when you want to operate? Is it that when you want to operate there is no oxygen? Is it when you want to operate the light will go off? These are time bound. Or you don't have blood, sufficient blood to transfuse when you need to transfuse uh, patients. So we have a mirage of problems. Health is wealth and we must address this. I must, must address this. So a whole lot of... Um work needs to be done. Talk, you know, talk about um, stepping up acts on the part of uh, the local government and states. Now. Yes. We have the manpower. Those who are on, on, on ground, they have the competencies. They need equipment. They need updates. You see the resident doctors who have been going on strike for mundane issues. Totally, totally avoidable. avoidable. We can all come together and have a summit and discuss and implement. I know that Nigeria had had a couple of uh, there are such, so many. such there are so summits many. and. Uh, but we review. Do we have any review mechanism? We don't. We, once we finish, that is the end, and that is not good enough. Okay, we we're talking about pandemic, the COVID pandemic. What is the role of research in this? What is all we see is every night, if you are awake till twelve, you see NCDC rolling out figures of new cases. Now, if you say these are new cases, scientifically, how many did you do before you said that this number is positive? Scientifically, you can't because the denominator must be known so that you calculate percentage. When you calculate percentage, then you have, we can even draw a graph to look at the uh, trend. We don't have that. And that is a federal government institution that should be able to do that for us. You have, if you say there are 100 ca new cases, well, how many did you do? How many tests? How many people did you test before you have 400? 100. The denominator must be known. As a scientist, we look at figures. We look at. It's not enough to say the figure is coming down. Yeah, based but, on what? When, when you say the figure is coming down, based on what? It is based on the number you do, the tests you do. Uh, talking about uh, the achievement of uh, the universal health coverage, we it, it's sad to know that um, we're a country where you know, out of pocket spending on health is still very high. How can we reverse the trend? We should orientate ourselves because the principle of universal health coverage is that nobody who wants, who needed to have health, health care, should be deprived. You must get access to health care and also lead financial factor.
not be a, a reason for not getting access to health. But what has changed? Is it that changing for the better or for the worse? That is the situation we find ourselves today. We, we have governments, we have a um, private sector, we have a series of people. You see, the failure is that everybody wants to do it own. We must come collectively to agree on the way forward. We must agree. We must sensitize, we must lead, we must motivate, we must you know, uh, ensure that you, you get people on board. It is not enough to say I, I, I. That's not like I. It should be we. In science, it should be we. So as long as we are not, we, I mean, I don't know. And you, you see, the problem is that uh, those in authority, I mean, not, I'm a vice chancellor myself, but the unfortunate thing is that those in authority will not want to hear anything negative about them. But if anything, everything cannot be positive in life that is up and down, just like we talked about the health system yes. going, you know, going up and down. We must, people must say the truth so that we can then rebuild the country. We cannot expect the president of Nigeria to do this. That's why he has ministers, he has DGs, he has all these other people. We must come together. The DNM is doing his best, if you recall. When, during the early days of COVID, we say Nigeria should close its borders. I'm happy that the government of Nigeria has said that nobody from Brazil, uh, India, and uh, was Turkey. And Turkey should come into Nigeria. That's the right direction. That's the right step. Should we have any reason to be worried about what is happening in India at the moment? There's no, dis there's no distance anymore. There's no distance. Once we get one person with their vi variant, we are finished because there is nothing on ground to believe that we can sufficiently contain the the you know the, what is happening if it comes to Nigeria. So we must what the government has done so far, in my opinion, is the right direction. And the next thing the government has given its own rule, but what about the implementation? And uh, the the, uh, the uh, presidential steering committee on COVID nineteen yeah. came up with. Uh, a new uh, instruction. Compliance is the issue. When they say people should not, uh, there should be social distancing, nobody bothers. How do, how do we implement that? It's knee-jerk action. Some people just go and say, we, we, we arrange some people. You arrange some people today, tomorrow they do the same thing. You go to Wuse Market, you see the number of people falling over themselves. They are not even using face masks. So they don't, they don't, yes, but they're plotting because there's no implementation, there's no follow up implementation, and that's why we talk about evaluation because that is science, that's science, that's research. Now, when we are doing these things, we must evaluate our actions. If we say, okay, people should wear, wear, wear face masks, all you need to do is to stay on the road and be counting the number of people who pass and who wear uh, face masks or who do not wear face masks. If you do that for two hours, you will have evidence to say that, ah, out of 100, you know it's only 10 people or 20 people that are wearing face masks. It's not, you're not getting it from the moon. Social distancing, you can, you, I'm happy that in, the, in some churches now, this is being obeyed. Like we are observing social distancing. Yes, we That's are. why I could afford yeah, not yeah, to you wear my see. own face so mask. So you will see, I even have my face mask yeah, here. But because you know, but because I don't want to model my yeah. my statement. And of course, the distance between you and I. Yeah, it's so over. Yeah, so. Otherwise, I would have insisted that you wear your face mask. I would have told you if you wear your <laughs> face mask because we must comply to yeah. show good examples. Yeah. You know, but the pro problem in Nigeria is that compliance is the issue. Failure of compliance is the issue. Mm -hmm. And people who should enforce the compliance, but then will you blame them? What is the what is on ground for them to be able to uh, to, to to enforce the compliance? Do you have vehicles? Have you seen any vehicle on COVID? Something monitoring team? Have you seen I've not seen any? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. You should find it shouldn't be NCDs anymore, it should be COVID nineteen monitoring team. Okay. And they should be going all over the place. The, in fact, the National Orientation Agency should up its game because they must be co continually uh, informing and educating people, sensitizing people. But they have not, I'm sorry, I have not heard that. Oh. And it should, you see, it should be in the various languages. It should be in the various languages, local languages, so that people will understand. I think they've done that to some extent. No, no, you see, it's a continuum. Okay. 
It's not you just want there. It's a continuum. Sensitization is a continuum. It's not just one of them. You know, and because people do not think that there is COVID. People don't think there is COVID, unfortunately. When you say, where are they dying? So are we going to wait for people to die before we comply? Where the pandemic is concerned, mm. the global community mm. is at a stage of uh, vaccination. What's your take, you know, coming from the NMA so far? I, I showed it clearly. I went as a leader. I had my first dose. On the 18th of June, I will go for my second dose. And this was carried by the media. Because even me, some people were telling me I should not go. I should not go, I don't, they don't want me to die yet. I said, look, <laughs> if as scientists we use human beings, as guinea pig to yes why should i not if i die i'll go but i went and I, there was nothing that happened to me i didn't have any headache i didn't have any body pain i mean i didn't have any reaction at all that's not to say that maybe some other people may not have but that is accepted even the polio vaccine even the measles vaccine you know children may have fever you know they some may vomit but we have antidotes you know, we have only those to do this, to correct those things. Nigeria is so intelligent. Nigeria is so, so capable. And we have the competences to start to ensure that we will can produce our own vaccine. Well, what is India? When you compare the knowledge and competencies of Nigerians with India, they are not, but they are the one producing this. Thing. But it's not done by one person alone. It's done by collaboration and partnership. So is NMA championing that horse? Well, NMA's position is to continue to educate and sensitize. We don't have the power of enforcement. All we do is to advocate. First of all, at the moment, we do not have anywhere in this country where we will have clinical trials. We don't. So I was in Naima. I did everything. I went everywhere so that we can have centers for clinical trials. But I'm happy I'm told that the Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research is building a ward that they could use as their own beds for clinical trial. Because you cannot do clinical trial by just sending a patient home, you know, if you give the vaccine now. No, you must be around, you monitor in case there are, there are any issues. So we need to be committed. You see, commitment is number one. And it is, it is a political commitment and also to invest and to value the, the, the role of research in, in development. It doesn't have to be health research alone, what of agriculture, engineering, you know, water resources. So research is the fulcrum of development, and that is why you find that in Europe, okay, why have we suddenly got vaccine within one year? Research. research, and it's a need. People are responding in Europe and America. They don't want they know that people to die. And because they were dying in number, they then got uh, prior they prioritized and ensured that they must get vaccine for this uh, COVID-19. And they've gotten it. So the determination is very, very important. We must be determined. We must be focused. And we, in doing so, we must invest. We must invest. Otherwise, we're just wasting our time. It's been nice talking to you, Professor Innocent Uja, President of the Nigerian Medical Association. Thank you for spending time with us on health options. Thank you very much, Rabi. This is our show for this week. A quick reminder that you can go to our YouTube channel to watch the upload of these and other episodes of the program. Email us for your comments and contributions at healthoptions at nta.gov.ng. Continue to stay safe by observing all the COVID-19 safety protocols. I remain yours, Rabi Abdullah. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.